After constant fear of my Spectrum radio failing me mid-FPV flight, and a lot of research, I decided to get a Rangelink UHF system. Now I'm not going to do a review of Rangelink, but I can say that it is amazing. So in this video, I will show you how to set up Rangelink on a Spectrum radio with a plug-and-play cable, and the supplied cables provided with the Rangelink. As a bit of background information, the Rangelink transmitter runs off 7 to 13 volts DC. The stock Spectrum battery is only 4.8 volts, which is not enough power to run the Rangelink transmitter. Therefore, unless you have upgraded your transmitter pack, you are unable to run your Rangelink unit off your radio's internal battery, so I will not be going over how to set up your Rangelink for that. It is also good to know that there are two cables supplied with Rangelink. One has two black wires, which is for RC control, and the other one has one black wire and one white wire, which is used for head tracking. For this video, you can set the head tracking wire off to the side. Now looking at the provided RC cable closer, there is a red and black wire, positive and negative, which are used for powering your Rangelink transmitter with the 3-cell LiPo. Next to the red wire, there is a blue wire, which is the PPM input wire. To top it off, next to the blue wire, there is another black wire, which is a ground wire. To start assembling this cable, solder on your preferred connector onto the positive and negative wires. Simple enough. Then go and take an old pair of headphones or an auxiliary cable that has either one or two plastic rings on the connector, like you see here. A mono plug is the best, but a stereo plug also works. Cut off the headphone jack and pull back the heat shrink, exposing the inner wires. Every cable with two rings should have a black and a red wire and another colored wire, in my case white. You will not need the colored wire, but solder the black wire from the headphones onto the black wire on the RC cable, then solder the red wire on your headphones onto the blue wire on the RC cable. Then put some heat shrink on and BAM! You just made yourself your cable. These next instructions apply for the homemade cable and the plug and play cable. So plug in your RC cable into the very right port on the Rangelink transmitter. If you have the sticker on it, it will be labeled RC. Then plug in the jack into the trainer port of your radio. The radio will turn on its screen and read SLAVE. Then plug your 3-cell battery into your Rangelink system. The light will turn on and all is good. You do not actually flip the switch on your radio to turn it on, and you do leave your radio's battery in and plugged in even when the Rangelink transmitter is being powered. I have the battery attached with Velcro. Also make sure that the antenna is vertically mounted, otherwise the range will not be nearly as good. Moving on to the receiver, looking at it like this, the very outside row of pins are where the ground wire of the servo plugs connect. Then move inwards one row. There is the positive row of pins for 4.8 to 5.5 volts, and then the very inside row of pins are for the signal wire. Now according to my setup, channel 1 is throttle, channel 2 is aileron, channel 3 is elevator, and channel 4 is rudder. Channel 1 is the very first set of pins on the opposite side of the antenna, then moving inwards towards the antenna is channel 12, which I have no idea what is for. Speaking of the antenna, when mounting both the RX and TX antenna, only tighten them until you feel little resistance, otherwise you can break the SMA connector. Unless absolutely necessary, do not take the antennas off either the TX or RX. It increases the chances of breaking the SMA connector. Then when mounting a receiver on a plane with FPV, keep the Rangelink antenna as far away from the video transmitter antenna as possible. They give off the radiation, so you don't have to keep the actual units away from each other, just the antennas. When it comes to mounting the antenna, I have mine mounted on the winglet of my wing. Make sure it is vertical for best reception. The part of the antenna coming out of the coax is in a straw that sticks straight up, and the other part is straight down. That just about covers it. Read the manual a couple of times. I'm sure you'll find some information. Look in the description for a link to the manual. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed.